tier list of, of companies and, and sectors in the, in the brochures. Um, but she's an expert in crisis management in China, which I think is, is definitely uh, very relevant to, to sustainability and, and CSR in China. So uh, hopefully she'll be able to talk about that. Um, but she'll also be talking about the um, ways to embed CSR uh, into brands. So yesterday uh, we heard uh, from Richard Brubaker how, uh, how valuable CSR really is uh, to employees, but also to brands. So today, uh, Ilan will be able to share with us actually how to do that. So let's uh, welcome Ilan up to the stage. Thank you. So after one morning, actually it's not just one morning, actually it's already been one and a half day. So you might feel drowsy now. So I feel the topic I'm going to touch upon or I think it's more about case study instead of theory because we are doing about communication. Because we are doing brand communication, CSI is normally taken as a major tool for brand building. Of course, we also see different issues. So today, it's actually, we are going to utilize a lot of case studies and videos to showcase that. I hope that it will not too much boring so we can see what are the practices best practices. So this is our global CEO. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of Rudolf Fink. This is our CEO, Kathy Blue Garden. Actually, at the gate, you can see a book of Kathy Blue Garden, How Do You Build Trust? So actually, the book has been published in China two years ago. It's a little bit outdated. But the book describes as a global CEO, how did they observed about the practices of building trust, successful stories, and unsuccessful stories as well. So if you're interested, you can get the book from our booth. So she believes that the most important thing, or for the whole rule thing believes that corporate social responsibility is no longer about responsibility. Actually, we have listened to a lot of presentations. If we take CSR just as a good to have or a decoration on the wall, we don't need to sit here. So communication is very important and help the organizations to build their image. But CSR is not just for decorating the communication. I'm trying to highlight this opinion here. So I don't want to talk about trend, about the trend of the CSR during the last few years. Actually, globally, CSR has become a major topic. During the last few years, according to my understanding of CSR, actually, before we actually talk more and do less, everybody was talking about that. But there was not so much implementation. There was a lot of donation, but CSR related with the operation with the end organizations were very few. But during recent years, we see more organizations are actually going deeper into that. Actually, our government has also mentioned that all the SOE needs to submit their SR report and any report of CSR. So Actually, I can see significantly changes of CSR and CSR campaign in China now. But are there some new trends? I do see some new trends. So I'm trying to be very modest to, to discuss with you about that. Speaking of CSR and for the long-term development of the corporate, actually, that topic has been talked a lot. So I have only half an hour, so I don't want to talk too much about that. Actually, CSR has gone through a process. Actually, at the beginning, it is only a philosophy, and later it turns to be a responsible citizen with top-down engagement. It doesn't mean that we don't need to be top-down, but in the current society, for the young generation, and increasing more and more. Actually, young people's perception of ESR or for the grassroots understanding of CSR, their demands are increasing. 
So by now, we can see a lot of interesting things like CSR 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Actually, it's going social. This actually is moving rapidly forward in China. Maybe it's not that complete like globally. Actually, I came back from New York recently because with our global collaboration, I also did some CSR programs. Actually, in U.S., a very popular program like um, praise on uh, Facebook. How many praises you you got? You will be able to get how much donation. It's just like um, WeChat welfare. So you can all see on the websites of the organizations are integrated with social platforms like Johnson and Johnson. The comments and transfer and forwarding and posting on the social platform can be synchronized onto their official website. So to a certain extent, the official website of the organizations are no longer closed loop. It turns out to be more interactive. So actually, you can utilize the corporate, and you will be able to share on Twitter and or Facebook. In China, we can also share it through microblog or WeChat. I think for everyone engaged in CSR or CSR communication, there are two mindset changes. First, CSR. Of course, has its top-down part, but apart from high pressure or dictation or those official instructions, how do we have activate the grassroots? All the employees to become a part of the CSR has already become a major topic. A lot of people are talking. CSR cannot be activated internally. I have heard about that a lot of times. And you would see that BU will ask you how much money have you make for me. You just spend money instead of making money. So sometimes the CSR will be suspended. And how do we measure KPI for CSR? We heard that question many times. If we take a marketing or sales perspective to look at CSR, we don't need to do that. CSR, the meaning, is not for sales. But do we have a better way for integration? How do we evaluate its values? I think today's CSR is like how many people do you engage? That that will be a very important benchmark. Later, I will also tell you how do we let it happen in terms of communication. So very interestingly, I don't need to talk. About CSR's importance, about brand building. Actually, during last years, a lot of enterprises has learned about the importance of CSR because of a lot of incidents, such as um, um, poisonous um, milk powder or gutter oil. So people are concerned how much gutter oil they have taken. So we don't. No longer to pay attention to about the connection between CSR and the sales, but there are also some um, success successful stories like donation for sports matches. Actually, actually, it's, it was not not easy for donation for foreign funded enterprises. So, and he made a donation and asked me whether I, we need to make a, a press release. I check out on the Iman. I said it's better not to do that. Otherwise, you'll be、um, scolded by, by, by the general public. So it doesn't mean how much money you you spend. So we don't need to talk. How? What is the reality? Actually, or what kind of attitude it is? Actually, for an organization, the most important thing is the intention of the en enterprise, and also the recognition of the market. Sometimes there's a gap in between. Normally, for the brand, the market wants to build, and how the market is perceiving the brand are two different things. And CSR actually can helps the organization to build a good communication environment and channels, so that people can listen more to the 
cooperation. It doesn't mean that people will always hear, but if they think this enterprise is reliable, they would be willing to listen more. Actually, CSR is not, is not about sales. It's more like about brand building, and it's more about synchronization between internal and external. When we are looking at that, we would say that when we build a good brand for the organization, there should be some coherence, and we need to have a good vision. The company's vision for the future, or their positioning for themselves, and also corporate culture. Corporate culture is not something you hang on a wall. It's actually during their daily process. What kind of culture they have showcased in their daily life? We have many enterprises said that they want to become a human-oriented enterprise. But if we see a different situation in the act reality, we cannot say it's their culture. Another thing it, that is important is that when we realize that actually there is also a corporate image, actual culture, and And their image on the market will also have gap. And when will the brand be very strong? Only when the reliability is very high, it, the image will be also good. So actually, CSR should be a binding agent. So no matter for internally or externally, it needs to have. It, Specific communication between. It will also bring a lot of things. The most important thing is trust, and also integrity, ethical in integrity. Actually, that was not done very well in China. Actually, the turnover rate is very high in China. It's very difficult for recruitment. A lot of enterprises are telling me it's so difficult to recruit people. Actually, in some companies, CSA has already become. Strong tool to maintain the loyalty of the employees to the company. When we talk about building a brand, you can see we add a lot of things here. But I want to highlight one thing here, which will be relevant for a lot of company. That is emotional benefits. I'm talking about communication. CSR will often be taken as、um, something. Good to have, because it has no relationship with any department. Business department says so, because the measurement of KPI is based on the sales and profits. CSR has nothing to do with me. If we evaluate CSR based on the sales and marketing, it will die. HR department said we want competency behavior. We hope we want. Every module to have deliverables, but that has nothing to do with CSRs as well. And communication department says coverage. It also has nothing to do with CSR. So the challenge for CSR is, so what is it actually? So actually, there's one thing important that is the emotional benefits. CSR builds an emotional connection. A、common values, common culture, common recognition, emotional consistency—that is very important. Of course, many people ask me, "How do we do that?" HR says, "You can use their module, but if you do it very calmly, you won't be able to achieve it. If you use the very realistic modules of sales, you you wouldn't achieve it as well." So how do we engage people so that people can have this kind of values and recognition? Although individuals and enterprises can have something in common, they can have some consistent image internally and externally. So let's go one by one. So how do we build、uh, emotional benefits so that internally and externally? We can have consistent communication so that we can build the CSR image for an organization. First step: 
sorry. So what does the enterprise want? And the internal, external information, what is it actually? Actually, a lot of enterprises haven't figured it out. If today, for example, pharmaceuticals industry, when we look at each enterprise for their vision, normally the, the wording are very similar, innovative, human-oriented, responsibility, leader, R&D. Basically, it's all about that, those things. What is the difference? So how do those words become reality so that internally and externally everyone can believe that it's not cliché? Actually, I'm going to play a video, okay? I'm sure from what you see from other enterprises, this one is very different. This is actually an internal campaign, and they also launch it externally. But actually, you can see the power of communication is not on the key messages, because a lot of PR people ultimately they die with the. Key messages, communication, power is to move people, and in today's society, moving people is not limited to text, slogan, key messages, and it should be consistent internally and externally. Internally, you need to have the buying of the employees and 
later you can get recognition of the outsiders. So first, I want you to understand communication is not internal. You need to have vision. You need to have a powerful way to convey it to your employees. What we see is a typical vision of Novartis. Their vision is that we want to extend lives of everyone. If you know about Novartis, we know they are pharmaceuticals, and the biggest revenue of them comes from tumor. And for all these communications are done by our global. We don't want our the community channel to be so flat. We want it to be very touchy and emotional, so the internal employees can better understand the core responsibility of the company in order to take more responsibility on themselves. I think for a company, you need to. Determine what kind of company do you want to be yourself. Secondly, you need to send this compelling message to yourself. As for this message, it has to be three-dimensional. It has to be a message with emotions, and you need to have this message in line with your employees. As a company. As a senior leader, you should not claim yourself to be like what. You need to reach the consensus with employees. That is a tough work to do. So I would like to share with you the next case. Please play the video again. Thank you. I think we all experienced how to have the several hundred years of anniversary. This is Citibank 200-year anniversary. This is global campaign. This is what we call a common purpose. How should we transform the company's mission into what the employee want to do? Most of the contents shown on the video, if you use a traditional communication methodology, it seems quite far from the core message you would like to deliver. But today, I specifically would like to talk about the emotional touch point. How to get yourself connected with someone out of emotion? In today's new world. We have completely new, different ways to change and to come to impress ourselves. In the big companies now, they still use text, but actually video, imaging, voice, all of these matters. So let me give you an example on how to use voice and audio. This is the 200th anniversary for Citibank. These are some specific purposes for this project. All of these are organized by the Citibank colleagues. This song is particularly written for them. Chinese people, 
Buddhist guys in suits. They are Chinese. The theme of this song is "What should you do today to make yourself proud?" So let's cut it short here. By this video, I want to say we have alternative ways of communication. Don't limit your communication methodology to the text and to the limited edition. How to activate and motivate your team becomes a very important issue. As your company, you have to clearly define yourself. What kind of company do you want to be? What responsibility would you like to take? This responsibility. Doesn't lie on the shoulder of the company itself. It belongs to everyone in the company and the organization. How to make them realize these responsibilities? Internal communication becomes crucial. Now let's look at external communication. Along with digitized communication, as well as information technology development, it is also changing. Just explaining drug Now, development is a、video. challenge, so I often use the alphabet as an analogy to help make sense of these complicated concepts. The first part of the alphabet, say letters A to F, represents basic research. This is where a scientist, typically an academic, looks at some molecular process in our cells and asks, "What's happening here? Why is it important?" As taxpayers, we fund over 30 billion dollars a year at this stage through the National Institutes of Health. This discovery science is the backbone of drug development worldwide. But aha moments alone are not enough to make a difference in human health. The next chunk of the alphabet, say letters G to P, represents translational research. Discoveries worked on for years in basic science are now examined in the context of a particular disease. This work helps us identify ideas that may actually get us closer to new medicine, and enable the leap of faith from testing in a petri dish to testing in a human being. The bad news is that most ideas will fail at this stage. It's the valley of death where breakthroughs go to die. The very few therapies that do make it through the valley of death still have to. So let's make it here. I believe these case studies are very interesting to you. I'm so afraid I make you fall asleep. I think all of these are channels to communicate to the external world. All of these methodology is also changing rapidly. You may send the press release. Opening some seminars, using the postcode got a really profound media press. It is particularly very different. What I want to address here is during the communication process, the attitude between two parties are equal. I need your help. I want you to understand us. Instead of just deliver a message to the external, like from upside down. I think this is a key point they will have to realize. You want to show yourself, exhibit yourself on how good you are. You are not seeking for support. This is the wrong attitude. By so many case studies, I want to mention one key point. I don't want to talk about the macro framework because the system has been further elaborated in two days already. How to further use communication to promote your own CSR spirit and create yourself as a credible platform? You need to understand what you are seeking for. You need to further energize the internal employees. Thirdly, you need to modernize your communication channels and make your communication more effective. The core is emotion connection. You need to have a shared value. You. Share the same emotions, and you echo with each other in these factors.
A lot of companies, they are very weak in this. So CSR becomes something only written on the paper. This is what we are not willing to see in the future. This almost comes to the end of my sharing. I got a lot of other studies, but I will skip. Before I stop, I want to give you the last example. A lot of the companies, they started to do the right thing in the very beginning. For example, Starbucks. We have the coffee factory. For Nestle, they have similar project as well. They are helping the poor region, the poor farmers, to farm the organic coffee beans and then they sell it in the shop. At the very beginning, they tell that that's organic coffee beans, and the price will be a bit higher. <laughs> the shop owner is also promoting these products to their customers, like how many people have been helping with. You will be willing to pay this slightly higher money to buy it. This is much more effective than having a traditional media interview. This means CSR is embedded in your company strategy already, from upside down. Everyone is in line with each other. Everyone is on the same boat. So only can we do this? Can we utilize CSR to create a platform that is universal? Thank you. I think uh, some of the key key points points there are just that. It's not about how much money you spend, but more about the the image you uh, you give off, the and the motivations that customers and, and clients and external stakeholders see. And internally, you need the alignment of vision, culture, and image. Um, and then we need to take advantage of of new media. I think CSR reports and sustainability sustainability reports are important, but these, these examples that Alain's given, uh, using videos, using social media, and so on, which can go viral, are definitely a way to, to build the brand uh, and build the brand value. So thank you for that. Um, we're going to open the floor now to, to some questions. Um, if people have any questions about that. Uh, Otherwise, I have one, but, but Anna has one. I'd like to ask a question. Thank you very much for the excellent sharing. My question is as follows. The establishment of brand required sequential efforts. When you deliver these messages to the public, some scandal may appear and sabotage everything overnight. Because from internal to external, we say that we are really good, and we have done a lot of words, works, but suddenly something happened. Will that deal even more damage than keep yourself silent? So how can we manage the crisis during this process? I think crisis management becomes a main issue already. Crisis will become the new norm, and we should not be afraid of it. Your company, whether it's famous or not, whether it's big or not, you will always have crisis. For the less famous company, your crisis may be smaller because you are smaller. But I think the brand benefits will also smaller. For the famous big companies, you need to self-regulate. In case of any crisis, you will face more challenges. That's the reality. You just need to get adapted. To manage a crisis, I think, first of all, you need to do the right thing. What you do and what you say has to be in line. If you cannot deliver what you say, crisis will be there waiting for you. And I think no matter what company you are in, there are always weaknesses. So in case of any emergency, you need to be transparent. You need to be responsible. You need to show some skill sets in admitting the mistakes. But to be cautious, next time you will never make the similar mistakes again. In the current society, we are becoming more and more mature than before. In the past, in case of any crisis, you have no idea how to deal with it. If suddenly a crisis popped out, it will shock everyone. But if the crisis is very high frequent, that's actually a growing stage, growing path for yourself. From my point of view, crisis is never 
that terrible. If you have a system already, in case of funding crisis, you can be responsible for that and find the right way to deal with it. I don't think that's that horrible. Hello, thank you very much for the sharing. I want to ask one question. In your sharing, you talked about how to use CSR spirit internally. For many company, CSR is a tool to enhance their brand image. So they will need to communicate externally. How can the media, can the customers, and can their users know what they are doing about CSR? So I want to ask a question. When you deliver the CSR spirit externally, do you have any specific suggestions? As a company, do you think their CSR responsible person needs to be measured based on certain KPIs? When we talk to our clients, I answer their questions like this. I will ask them the objective for doing CSR. For some companies, they have very clear target. They want their user to be lo loyal to the company. I would suggest them to do it internally. Sometimes they want to gain more support from the government. Then the CSR effort will be external. If your objective is to gain more support from the government, then the KPI will be based on the support. The objective is the criteria for you to judge, and your program will be totally around that specific target. I think KPI is not universal. You cannot use one KPI and apply it anywhere else. If your goal is to enhance your brand awareness, I would suggest a third-party research company to do a research prior and post your real project. If you want some governmental authorities to understand your company, we have specific benchmark as well, and there are organizations who can do the research in this perimeter as well. So I do suggest, according to your objective, you assign your unique KPI for external communication. Like I have addressed many times, you need to know your goal, your target. Some custom comes to us. I want to enhance my reputation in an all-round way, a holistic way. That because you have never said anything, you have to set up specific target. So for a program, it has to be very specific. I don't think public relations is targeting the general public. PR is very targeting to the niche market. It is very segmented. In such an era with new media, with the new technology, PR can be very accurate and precise. You need to understand your tier one tier and tier two target. Who are they? On CSR, you need to be bold enough and engage them. You should not only do it for showing. You want to involve the partner to participate with you. If your target audience is a government, do it with them. If your target is the vendor, when you are working on your program planning, you need to consider the vendor in your program already. For CSR, there is big difference with self communication. Because for CSR, you are doing something beneficial, doing something good. When the business purpose is reduced, there will be more and more possibility for you to attract outside participants. The most important thing for CSR is to involve your target in your program. This will be the best way to communicate, in my point of view, instead of just writing a report and show them afterwards. I think after your introduction, I was really interesting. I'm from e-commerce company. I'm the CSR director. I haven't been in my position for a long time, only starting beginning of this year. Sometimes I think internet brings us a lot of new information. Seems you are quite near your customers. But it also seems sometimes you are quite distant from them. There is a lot of unknown area upon further understanding. For e-commerce, 
company. If we want to work in CSR, do you have any suggestions from a communication point of view? This is very important for me. I think it will decide how I design my CSR program. Actually, I will talk about e-commerce in general. Taking e-commerce, I suggest your CSR program to be smaller in scale, not too big. But still, you need to evolve your target, evolve your audience. I will give you an example. I had a plan for another e-commerce before. Should not be your company. For e-commerce, they have hundreds, of millions of the boxes for packaging. Do we have a specific method to reduce the waste? And let people. To recycle the courier boxes in a more efficient way, in a more environment-friendly. Actually, the problem is how to engage the people. Do not create more burdens for the government. You need to create more benefits for them. Then they will move together with you. So, do not think that do things that is not sustainable. So you need to. Consider how do we do that for long run, and maybe we can build that into a brand so that it can be recognized by the people as a good platform instead of hitting here one day and hitting the other place the other day.